Hey, how's it going? Dave 2D here. So if you're one of my viewers that watch my videos because you want to purchase a high performance or a gaming laptop that isn't crazy expensive and you want someone that's more reasonably priced, you wanna pay attention to this one. So this is the HP Omen 15. And here's the thing, as a reviewer, you start to build these expectations for brands and products of what you think the product will be like, of what you think it should be like before the product even comes out. Like, you know, you know, an Apple MacBook is gonna be expensive and it's gonna run a little hot. And the same thing goes with HP Omen stuff. Like, you know, over the years, it's just, they don't make particularly high performance machines that run cool. That's just not what they've been doing, at least not for five or six years they've been bringing HP Omens to the market. This year's a little bit different. This is the Omen 15 for 2020 and they changed so much stuff. Like, we, we just gotta go in. So this is a machine that comes in two variants, an AMD version and an Intel version. Now, people always ask me, why do you get the Intel version, Dave? Don't you, like, are you an Intel fanboy? Listen, as a reviewer, if you're gonna review a product, particularly for one that has questionable thermal performance in the past, you're gonna get the hottest configuration. You want the one that has the highest risk of not performing properly. So it's an Intel version, and it's a high spec Intel version to get these things as hot as possible because if these things underperform here, now you know. Because if I got like a, a Ryzen version and it got like a low end GPU, if it performs great, you have no idea how good the, the hot ones are gonna run, right? You get it? Okay. This is the fully spec'd out Intel version. And let's just jump into performance. It has excellent performance. The components are very powerful, so it pushes out great frame rates in games. And thermally, there's no throttling. The temperatures are comfortable. Fan noise isn't crazy loud. This is a machine that is just so unlike HP. They've never had a device that was cooled as well as this. Like their whole HP lineup for years, this is the best by far. Now, if there's one complaint I have about the thermal system, it's the fans don't go completely silent at idle. There's no way to actually turn these fans down enough so that they're inaudible. Like the fan is on right now, the mic is picking it up ever so slightly, right? You can probably hear it. It's not annoying, but if you work in an environment or you have some kind of work which requires a completely silent system, this ain't gonna be it. Uh, but aside from that, thermally, it's on point. Okay, I'm just going to the design of this thing because they revamped the exterior of this thing as well this year. It now has this diamond on the front of the laptop that's this bluish green gradient fade. It's very obvious. Like if you look at this, you can tell if you know your laptops that this is an HP Omen, but at the same time, it's not super obnoxious, right? It's not a glowing one. It doesn't light up and it's subtle enough, at least to me, I feel like some people are gonna hate this, but I personally like it. I think this is something that sets it apart from thousands of other laptops out there, but at the same time, it's not annoying. It's a metal build, it's metal on the top, it's got metal on the keyboard deck, it's a unibody chassis, and the bottom's also metal. There is a couple issues I have in terms of the kind of build quality. The hinge, I would say, is a little looser than I'd like, like the screen hinge, when you lift it up and down, it's got a little more play than I'd like to, not like a wobble, but I just feel like the hinges should be slightly tighter. But there's also this issue where on the side of the laptop, on this, yeah, you can see it here. The screen on a laptop rests on the keyboard deck when it's closed, right? And on the actual palm rest area, there is material there so that when you close it, it rests on that palm rest area. But on the back half of that screen, there's nothing holding that screen up. Like there's nothing supporting it. So let's say you do lift your laptop up. Like you wanna pick up to go somewhere. If you grab it on the front here, it's no problem. You're pushing down on it and the palm rest area is supporting it. But if you pick it up on the back half of it, there's this weird flex that just happens to be there. I don't like it. I don't know if that's gonna affect the longevity or the durability of the screen because it's not like you're cranking it hard, but I just feel like it was a bit of a design miss when they built this thing. I just wish it wasn't there because otherwise the build on this thing is fantastic. The port selection is pretty nice. You got your regular USB connections, but you also have an SD card slot and an ethernet jack, and you have two display outputs. And there's also a third, like they have a dongle that they include. So there's technically three video outputs on this machine, if you so choose. So it's a healthy dose of ports. The screen that I have on this unit is the upgraded 4K 120 hertz panel. I normally stray away from 4K panels on laptops, particularly gaming laptops, because I like my high refresh and often they don't come in high refresh. This comes in 120 hertz and it supports G-Sync, so very fast, very smooth, bright, 
great colors. I really like this screen. Now, this is the upgraded panel. So if I had to choose one of the panels as like a universal recommendation, it'd be that first upgrade. So 1080p, 144 hertz, very easy recommendation. It's not super expensive, but it gives like great gaming experiences. You want that faster refresh. Uh, the keyboard, this is an excellent layout. I feel like this is like the model keyboard layout for a laptop. Nice, clean arrow key clusters and dedicated page up, page down keys. And they're in this really obvious spot. The reason why it's so good is because this is the same layout as a regular desktop keyboard, right? You don't have to reorient yourself just because it's a laptop. You know where stuff is because you've typed on a regular keyboard. I think that's why I like this layout so much. The keys themselves are a little small, but they're responsive. I think most people will really enjoy using this keyboard. Now the lighting comes in a few variants. This is the fully upgraded one, like it's got per key RGB. The base model comes in a fully red, like only red lighting. And if you pay 10 bucks, you can get four zone. So pay the 10 bucks. I feel like you'll regret it otherwise. The trackpad is okay. Like the gestures and tracking are fine. It's glass surface, very smooth. I like it, but the mechanism for the click is, it feels sluggish almost, like not as responsive as I'd like it to be. I think it's just the button underneath. Now, if you take a look at the insides, the first thing I noticed was the significantly improved thermal system this year. It now vents out the back and one of the sides. The previous Omens have always vented out the back and oftentimes not enough of it, but now it's got bigger fans, three big heat pipes. This thing is done well. There's two RAM slots, two NVMe bays, and a 70 watt hour battery. Now in this unit, I have a 4K panel. I'm getting three and a half hours of battery life. I feel like if you had the 1080p panel, it'd be like four, maybe four and a half hours. To be expected considering how powerful the system is, but that is what we have for battery life. And then the speakers on the side, they are classically mediocre, as you'd expect on a gaming laptop. You know, that's maybe the next frontier. We've solved thermals. Speakers are next. Okay, I wanna close off this conversation with this topic of, well, the industry right now. A long time ago, when the first gaming laptop came to the market, I'm sure it had terrible thermals. I don't know which company made it, I don't know how bad the numbers actually were, but there's no way it was a properly cooled machine. But look where we are today, July 2020. We're looking at an HP Omen that is properly cooled. It took HP five or six years to land on this, but they've, they've done it, right? This is something that, I feel like this is symbolic of the entire industry, the entire laptop industry. You look at any company out there, HP, Acer, Asus, Lenovo, Alienware, Razer, they're all capable of making machines now that do not overheat, which is awesome. Like all the memes that people are making over the years, sure they're expensive and sure the fans can be loud sometimes, but at the very least, they run cool. That's a win. Okay, that's the HP Omen. I think this is a, a very good machine. Uh, considering its price especially. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.